Oh, it's still vibrating. Great. It's great for the content. I'm killing it. This is what the people pay for. Quality content. Jimmy. Mommy, I ain't making a video. I thought you were finished. No. I, I apologize. It's okay. I forgive you. Now, back to work. So, yeah, I, I did what every self-respecting human does after a breakup. That's not mine, you know, but I got my hairs cut and they're fancy and it's really cool because, you know, I have on one side, it's one of those asymmetrical things, you know, so on one side, it's all like dark and broody, right? Like, see, this is my dark and broody side, like I'm kind of mad, you know? And on this side, it's my fun side. See? Isn't it cute? It's super cute. I love it. It's amazing. Now it makes me want to get one of those key light things, though. You know? So you can see my cool highlights. Because it's fun. And now I just messed it all up. But yeah. Getting a haircut after a breakup. 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. And yes, I still understand that it is not my breakup. That I got, you know, my hairs cut for. But I have a new lease on life. I feel like everything is, you know, great and awesome and wonderful. Mostly. This video has nothing whatsoever to do with hair products at all. But I knew that you guys were going to notice. And so I had to talk about it. I got my hairs did. We are actually doing uh, Project Soapway today. And we are starting off with one of my favorite humans that I've never really done much interacting with. But after her video footage, I'm like, we should be besties. Why are we not besties? You know? And I'm so super excited to tell you why I thought we should be besties and show you her lotion recipe and all the things. And I will do that in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things. And you are here for week 18 of year three and Project Soapway Challenge number six, winner number one. Lots and lots of numbers. And today's winner for the lotion challenge is Kimberly from Herbs and Berries. And first up with the Project Soapway, just a quick rundown in case you've forgotten or whatnot. It goes as thus. I submit a brief to the Sudzers. They decide whether or not they want to do said brief. They take pictures, send it, blind submissions, all of that jazz. I pick three winners with the jury. And then they send the footage that they had to have captured, you know, in the making of the thing. So I can edit it and talk about them and promote them and their socials and all the things. Right. For this particular challenge, however, the lotion challenge, I did not do like pictures of the finished product. Instead, I just told them to submit the recipes. Because when it comes to lotion, I can totally tell just based on the recipe, either whether or not it's cool or good or awesome, or whether or not it's interesting and I want to, you know, see more of it, you know? And for this one, it was very cool and interesting as far as the recipe goes, because she used a lot of fun stuff, like strawberry glycerite, which I find really cool. I really like it when people go outside of their comfort zone or really try to manufacture themes with fun and interesting ingredients in a product that otherwise might not need it, but we're going to up the awesome, you know? And so Kimberly of Herbs and Berries, very cool human. I loved listening to her footage because it was like listening to me. And I know that sounds weird, you know, but it's like she was in my brain or we share the same brain or whatever, because she's spending the entire time doing a Q and A with herself, you know, saying something to her, and then her other self is answering. And I do that all the time. 
but also also because she didn't have her phone to do her timers for all of the different phases of the lotion because she was using her phone to film, you know, she decided to sing a song during that and I loved it. And so like 90% of this video was either her just randomly talking to herself or singing and girl can sing. She has such a beautiful voice and it put me in such a good headspace just listening to her footage to prepare for this. And I mean, I want to be your bestie after all of that. It was pretty perfect. And I did include a couple clips of all of that. Probably not her singing. I don't think I kept her singing because I didn't ask her if I could do that. And it might make me feel uncomfy, you know, with the singing stuff. If somebody just released me singing. So I don't know if I put the singing in, but she's definitely a lot of fun. She has such a big, awesome personality. And I'm excited to tell you more about her throughout this video, as well as talk about the recipe that she made. And, you know, show you the end product and the lotion-y of the lotion things. So let's go to the video and we can do all of that. Okay, I know what you're thinking. And the answer to that is no, we are not making jam today. This is not preserves. This is Kimberly of Herbs and Berries incorporating the name of her business, Herbs and Berries, into her products and she does that as often as she can manage really and she did both in this we have both herbs and berries and so in this instance what she is doing is she is making the glycerite now this was the reason why I actually selected this recipe and wanted to see what she did with it because as I said I had them actually just send me the recipe and nothing else for the selections of this and here's what it is so we have the 3% strawberry glycerite in the liquid phase of this actual recipe. And I found that to be very interesting because we have with, you know, the glycerite, I wanted to know really what she had done with it. Did she make it herself? Is this something that she purchased? Is this a purchasable thing? And so here we are really learning that. And she did in fact make it herself as you just saw. Now a glycerite is different from a tincture only in its essential, the thing that's used to extract the goodness from plant matter. So in a tincture, you use alcohol. They're generally alcohol based. And in a glycerite, you're using glycerin and your plant matter. And in this case, she is using strawberries as her plant matter. And that's again, 3% of her total lotion recipe. And I find that to be very cool because the strawberries themselves, as far as like skin benefits, for a strawberry, it's, I mean, obviously it's going to be a, a skin brightener, but also there's an oil control element to it, which I really dig because when you are looking at a lotion, you obviously don't want it to be drying by any stretch of the imagination. First and foremost, you're going to want it to be moisturizing, the opposite of drying. And so oil control might not seem like a good thing to put into a lotion recipe, but I think that it's a very good thing to put into a lotion recipe because one of the reasons why skin can get overly oily or overly dry has a lot to do with the balancing of the skin's pH. And so an oil control recipe is going to help out with keeping the skin's own natural moisture intact, especially when coupled with that glycerin, obviously. And it can be a very useful tool to put in a leave-on product. In addition to the glycerite and all of this in the liquid phase, so first up, it's a 75-25% split, which means 75% liquid, your water at al, and 25% of your oils and butters in this actual recipe. So in addition to the glycerite, she also has included a 2% addition of sorbitol. Sorbitol is actually good because it acts as a natural humectant, just like glycerin and will therefore help your skin, you know, preserve its own moisture and we won't have unnecessary water loss. I like this because in total what we're dealing with is only about 5% glycerin in this entire, you know, liquid phase. So it's not going to be so much glycerin that you run the risk of your skin actually drying out and or canceling out some of the benefits of the oils that you put in. So I love that. And with the oil, with the water that she puts into this, we have 40% aloe juice mixed with 30% water. So I also think that that is a really good idea too. Aloe is great for skin soothing. It's great for itchy skin. It's perfect for this time of the year to have a lotion that includes an aloe for sure. And within the liquid or the oil phase here, we have a calendula infused olive oil at 5%. 
and that's where she's getting her second, you know, bit for her herbs and berries. She's incorporating the herbs with the calendula infused olive oil, which I super love. And so let's go check out the mix. So with the rest of this recipe, again, 5% of the calendula infused olive oil. Calendula is known to be very calming for the skin. So this is shaping up to be a very great spring slash summer lotion. She also has included 2.5% mango butter, 2.5% shea. Shea is going to be a deeper penetrator. Mango is going to be drying. I don't super know the point of using them both together in equal parts, but sure, I'm interested. It's really cool. And she can tell us more about her logic, you know, if she would like, because that would be awesome. And there's also 5% apricot oil, 5% sweet almond oil. So that's going to round out the oils and butters for this. And the remaining ingredients, the 4.5%, is going to be the e-wax and the acetyl alcohol. And with that, again, as I stated yesterday, so e-wax is going to be really good for, obviously, the e-wax and the acetyl both are going to be really good for the emulsion. You want to make sure that your solution stays stable. But you also have with your e-waxes and your acetyl alcohols, your fatty alcohols, the benefits of being skin softening and all of that jazz. So there's a lot, you know, to be said about that. And then finally, she rounds it out with a 1% preservative and then a strawberry scent. Now, she's using her preservative at 1% and she did note it in her video that she was using it at 1% because of the plant matter that was put into this. Now, actual plant matter obviously was not put into it. You know, it was all strained out. But as, you know, an extra layer of caution, she upped that preservative just a little bit while still staying within her usage ratings. She essentially used the max. And I'm all here for that. I think that is a great idea. She is also including in all of this mica. And I do believe that she might run into some problems with the mica in this particular... Um, batch because I don't see anything that's going to really bind the mica to any of the lotion itself. And so while it may color throughout the batch, the majority of the actual heavy particles of the mica itself are probably going to sink to the bottom. If you're wanting to incorporate mica into your lotions, you super can, but I do recommend adding a little bit of polysorbate 80 or 20 or 40. We've had that conversation actually in a whole polysorbate video, so you can figure out which one you would prefer just to ensure that that mica is going to disperse nicely throughout all of it. And you're not going to end up with the, the, again, the heavier particles of that mica sinking to the bottom. If they do sink to the bottom, it's not that big of a deal. A, nobody ever gets to the bottom of a lotion container. And two, even if they did, it would not hurt the skin in any way, shape or form to have mica on it. I mean, this is the same stuff that our eye, you know, our eyeshadows are made out of. So I'm not worried about that at all but just something to keep in mind and point out. Now, as far as the rest of the oils go within all of this, so again, we have the olive oil, the apricot, and the sweet almond. And in addition with the mango and the shea, realistically what you're looking at is a comedogenic rating of very low. So I am not mad at that either. Apricot is a rather lightweight oil and olive and almond are sort of mid-range. And then again, you have the really deep penetrating with the shea and the sort of dry butter with the mango. So all in all, I really enjoy the spread of these oils and butters for sure. Ultimately, the calendula, very cool addition as well. I think what we're looking at here in the actual video is her second mix of this solution. And I think she did a total of three. And it was so delightful as she was mixing. Again, she's talking to herself and like answering her own questions and it's very cute. And she's, you know, self-deprecating, but then her other side is stopping that. And it's like, no, we don't do that. We're great. We're awesome. And then she also had a problem, right? Because normally she uses her phone to time each of these mixes and she was using her phone to film. And so she kind of stopped and she's like, okay, what do I do? How do I... How do I figure out how long the, of a time this is? And she's like, I know, I'm just going to sing a song. And she started singing um, Gospel Truth from, you know, the opening song from Hercules. And I'm like, okay, hi, we are we are friends now. I, I love you forever. Hello. And her voice was so incredible. And I was, you know, impressed. But then she went on for all of the rest of the, uh, all of the rest of the mixes and sang a different song. So she was singing... Um, 
Ariel's Look at the Stuff, Isn't It Neat, you know, song. And then she started singing like operatic amazingness and she's hitting all of these high notes. And I was just floored, you know, and just stopped what I was doing because I was making soap at that moment, right? Like I was listening to this while I was filming and making my own soap. And first up, of course, I'm singing along with the Disney tunes because I am a Disney girl. And that was delightful. But then she started singing this really cool show tune type thing. I don't know what song it was, but it was so gorgeous. And again, these high notes, she just nailed. And I almost left it in, but then realized that I don't know that I would like it very much if somebody left in my singing. You know what I mean? So I did not leave it in. And but I did find it very delightful and it made me feel so just happy and warm and fuzzy to hear it and hear her having so much fun while she was making her lotion because this is supposed to be fun. Yes, you have a business. Yes, this is a job. It's a thing. But if you're not having fun doing it, then well, I mean, what's the point, you know? Okay, so while we are watching her, you know, bottle all of these, all of this lotion, let's talk about herbs and berries. So according to her About Us page at herbsandberriesoap.com, she founded this in 2020. She is from Maryland. And in 2010, she began to make her own hair care products. It says here for her newly natural hair. And I've always took that to mean that this is a person who no longer uh, straightens their hair. But I suppose it could also mean that the hair was always curly before, but maybe dyed. I'm really not sure. But anyway, you look at her about us and there's a picture of her and she has gorgeous curls. So well done on the natural hair care products. But anyway, from that, she decided to continue on and following her love of science and, you know, her education and all of the jazz. She started the soap making and everything. Officially launched this in 2020. And again... As I said, she really does like to incorporate the, the, the name and the meaning of the name into everything that she makes. And so an herb or a berry infusion, which I think is really smart. Like that is super delightful to do because A, it keeps you, you know, it keeps your brand on track realistically. But two, it also makes this whole process of making a little bit easier, right? Because if you cannot find a way to incorporate herbs and or berries into your product, well, then you're not making it. And that's nice. Then you're not following the trends and doing all the things. And looking at her cold process soap line here, she has some very cool products. The Sirius, the Galaxy Collection, the Sirius soap is everything. It's so, the contrast between this purple and this bright stark white and that you should go check it out. It's very pretty. And she's got really fun names with a lot of this for sure. There's one called Beat It, B-E-E-T. And it is a fragrance-free bar of soap. And there is beetroot powder in it. Okay, so there you go. It also has heavy whipping cream. That's fascinating to me. I'm actually super interested in that. I think I am going to place an order because the ingredients on this it's pretty interesting. We've got olive, coconut, palm, sunflower, shea, castor, salt, heavy whipping cream, rose kaolin clay, powdered sugar, and beetroot powder. Wow. Wow. That, that, that is a recipe that I want to be a part of. I want to try that, you know, for sure. And the rest of her, uh, her website is actually really delightful. It's very informative which is very cool like her faq for example kind of covers every big question that most people are going to be asking when they are on a soap website right so it's what is artisan soap there you go is there lie in your soap she has the perfect uh response to that are your products vegan it does do your products treat xyz condition we, we are not intended to you know do that uh, do your products contain XYZ allergen? She's covered all the bases. And I find that very delightful, very smart. And it actually makes sense because this is the second business that Kimberly has. So she also does a clothing line, I believe. She's been doing that since 2017, according to her about us. And I find that very fun. So she definitely has you know, the experience to be doing a business, which is great. And it really shows it's not an overly flashy and, you know, 
just blown out website with a million different products, which I completely think is a great idea. Keep it simple. It's simple for your customers. It's simple for you. Nice salt soaks and scrubs and stuff here, some good lotions, but not too many of anything. And it hits all the high points, all the pertinent points of what somebody's going to be, you know, asking about. And I think that is an incredibly smart way to tackle this for sure. But yeah, I really enjoy the website. I think it's a really smart approach to, you know, a business like this. And her Instagram page, obviously it's going to be reasonably heavy on promoting her events, which is good. That's kind of the point of a business Instagram page. And I struggle with that a whole lot. And because it's like, well, how many times can I post a soap? I get it for sure. But at the same time, if your people are following you for your business on those sorts of pages, it should be about the soap, you know, and the events that you're going to do. So smart, well done. Now she has the, the yellow container that you just saw. Now that is her testing container. So she can actually package the other ones up and use those. But she did of course want to make sure that the lotion itself was cooled down and everything was firmed up before she gave it a nice test. So she went ahead and did that and went on with her day in prepper and you know sprayed her bottles in preparation for that which is cool but now we get to see what this looks like when it's all said and done and oh yeah so there's what i was talking about with the mica she was also noticing this in the video too like oh i see it and then she was quite smart with it like oh well that's not the end of the world cool we're gonna figure that out later let's test this lotion and it is smart to not to realize that it's not the end of the world it can totally be you know, figured out later. And I had already talked about kind of how you can avoid that. But this particular lotion, again, it is the same lotion that she has, as you can see. It's just kind of, she's had a hodgepodge of same recipe in the same bottle so she can test it. And it goes on very quickly. It's very beautiful. It's nice and you can tell that it's already moisturizing, but not overly so. You can tell that because she has a nice glow to her skin now but not a, you know, sheen that suggests it's overly oily. Very delightful. I like that a lot. I like how there was no white residue left behind. You know, sometimes it sucks when you get that lotion that just will not penetrate. So as far as figuring out how much of the oils and butters and whatnot she needed, she did that. And also here she was talking about how she was talking with her hands because we can't see her face. She was a delight. Seriously. The beginning of the video that I left in, you know, the coming up and she's talking to her mom and she's talking to herself. So cute. So amazing. And she is just somebody with such a big, bold personality that I immediately fell in love with just listening to this footage. And so I hope you guys fall in love with her too and go follow her. Go be a part of her soapy journey. But, you know, I'm going to let her send us out. I'm okay. You... It's enough of this. Thank you. Bye. And there it is, Kimberly of Herbs and Berries and her first ever and only lotion in her line. And I think it's delightful. I really like how she takes her name, Herbs and Berries, and tries to incorporate that, the herbs and the berries, into every product she makes. And so obviously the berry part for this would be the strawberries for the glycerite solution. And then the herbs would be the calendula infused olive oil. So that's super delightful. I love the look of her product. I love how it was immediately not greasy. It penetrated quickly. She didn't leave any sort of like white residue behind with any of that. It was absolutely delightful. And so is she. Again, like I said, she's got a really big personality and I love that. I love hearing people in their element just kind of being them because it makes me feel like we are, you know, bigger and more connected than perhaps we were before I heard it. So that was a lot of fun. And Kimberly is definitely somebody that I am happy to support and know, and you guys should be as well. So definitely check out her socials, do all the things, show her all the support and all the love. Go check out her website, maybe buy some lotion, you know, all the things. And obviously congratulate her either here in the comments or, you know, everywhere else that she can be found because that would be excellent. I really appreciate the Sudzers for being a part of this. Not only the people that submit, but also the Sudzers who come along for the Project Soapway ride and watch the videos and check out the recipes and do all the things and, you know, support and uplift their fellow Sudzers. That's important. We are a community that does that. We are a community that cares about each other, that watches each other's content because we are part of the makerspace. 
we don't just sit and expect everyone to be part of us and we don't support anyone else. It doesn't make any sense to me. So I love seeing that with the Sudzers and it's why we have such an amazing community for sure. And I'm super glad that Kimberly is a part of it. So as I said, go check out her socials, go show her all the love. I really appreciate that. And yeah, it was a fun video. It was something that definitely got me out of my funk and I enjoyed everything about it. So I hope you did too. For those of you who might be brand new to all of this, you know, definitely like and subscribe and whatever if you want to see the rest of the Project Soapway winners because they're all epic and awesome in their own ways. And I'm always delighted to be able to showcase them and use, you know, whatever platform I have to promote and uplift them so they can get as many eyes on them and their soapy or cosmetic, you know, creations that we possibly can do. So I'm out of here. I actually have a group of children in my house for the never ending sleepover. It's spring break for the kids. Yeah. And so I'm going to go because they're being loud. But I will see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of Project Soapway lotion -y fun. Bye. Millie Bravi Brown is getting engaged. Cool.